Welcome to section 31 of the viruses. This is an overview image of the viruses that you need to know for step one. In this lecture, we will discuss measles. Our measles story takes place outside in the park. See all of these weasels fleeing this little store back here? Yeah, they're fleeing because they started a fire and it's leading to lots of chaos, which you'll see throughout the story. In any case, weasels represents measles. So whenever you see weasels, think of measles. And measles is an RNA virus. At Physio, we like to use a red warm color scheme to represent RNA viruses. And you can see all these warm red colors back here. Now you can also see these dark rain clouds back here. And many of us get a negative feeling when we see dark rain clouds like this. For this reason, we like to use dark rain clouds to represent negative sense viruses. Okay, did you notice where the weasels are fleeing from? They're fleeing from this retail store. The retail store represents retinol or vitamin A. In the biochemistry image on vitamin A, we used a retail store to emphasize that vitamin A is the same thing as retinol. So retail store, retinol. You can even see that this shopper here in the front has a pet weasel. But what does retinol have to do with measles? Well, in patients with measles, administering vitamin A can be very helpful in reducing mortality, particularly if they are deficient in vitamin A. For whatever reason, having sufficient vitamin A or retinol in the body helps in combating measles. Now look at this sign. It reads, live weasels inside. Apparently, the owners of this retail store were showcasing weasels as a fun publicity event. You can see that the sign points inside the store with a sort of syringe shape to it. I guess the owners weren't aware just how dangerous a bunch of weasels really can be. In any case, the shape of the sign and the words on it, live weasels inside, will help you remember that the measles vaccine presents infection. And the vaccine is a live vaccine. So a live weasels inside sign for live measles vaccine. Notice this fire leaving the retail store and reaching to the forest? As you may have guessed, these mischievous weasels started this fire. In fact, this is why they are fleeing the store right now. The fact that this fire starts a long line will help you remember that measles is a linear virus. And the term linear is referring to the genetic material, or the RNA itself, and how it's in a linear pattern. But look at this poor weasel. All the fire and smoke is causing him to cough. You really shouldn't feel bad for him though. The fire and the smoke he's coughing on was caused by him and all his little weasel friends. And this coughing weasel represents the fact that measles can cause a cough. So coughing weasel for coughing in measles. So how did the weasels cause this fire in the first place? It was this oil lamp right here. Lamps typically heat things up, increasing the temperature around them. So this oil lamp here represents fevers which are common in measles. So the weasel breaking the heating oil lamp stands for fevers in measles. Now notice all this red ash from the burning tree covering this weasel's face. The red spots coat his face and begin to travel down towards his trunk. This rash looks a lot like the maculopapular rash that can be seen with measles. The rash starts on the face and then travels downward causing a truncal rash, just like the ash starting at the face and traveling down on this weasel. So again, ash on the face traveling down on this weasel stands for rash on the face and traveling down in measles. You can see the maculopapular appearance of this rash on this poor child. Clearly, it's already spread downward, including his trunk. Now this little weasel, having been near the warm fever fire, like the other weasel, wanted to cool off. So it placed its head right underneath a little spout pouring out water. This weasel is lapping it up as fast as possible. But there's so much water that it's just splashing and drenching his head. This water all over his head represents encephalitis. The fact that it's on his head helps point toward a brain infection. And the fact that it's water pouring all over refers to an infection of the entire brain, so encephalitis. Now let's look over at this weasel on the left. He's trying to lick off some gum underneath this piece of wood on the fence. The fact that it's licking this spot will help you remember coplic spots, which are present in measles. Oftentimes these coplic spots are seen a few days even before the rash appears. So if you see coplic spots in an unvaccinated child with a retinol deficiency, you may anticipate an imminent maculopapular rash. Now coplic spots are these little lesions present on the buccal mucosa. You can see they are clustered here and have a whitish appearance to them. So again, looking this little spot for coplic spots. This park was a fairly safe and innocent place to be. You can see some crayons laying right here. Some sweet child must have been coloring right before the weasel associated chaos broke out. Anyways, this pair of crayons the child left behind is clearly melting and mixing together with all of the heat from the fire. So pair of mixing crayons for paramyxovirus. Now look at what the little child was coloring. It looks pretty sinister. A red skull with green orbits? Yikes. Maybe the kid wasn't so innocent after all, or at least he was disturbed in some way. Now this skull represents sclerosing, and the fire burning it up represents encephalitis, more precisely panencephalitis. This is a subacute condition that can occur years after the initial infection. It is devastating and has long-term consequences. This is way worse than the straightforward viral encephalitis demonstrated by the thirsty and drenched weasel in the back, which we talked about before. So the skull on fire represents subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. Now look at this tearful and red-eyed weasel. I think he feels very guilty for all the damage he and his friends have caused. 
He has an ash-laden friend, chased off a little kid, left his crayons behind. The friends behind him are licking spots and another coughing near the original fire. I can understand why he feels a little bit guilty. In any case, those red eyes represent conjunctivitis. His tears represent coryza, or tearing eyes. Much like the coplic spots, coryza and conjunctivitis can precede the maculopapular rash. Remember that weasel with the cough? Well, well, clearly he doesn't feel the pressure to run away from the burning store because he is distracted with this little slinky he stole from the store. Playful little guy. Anyways, this slinky makes this very helical shape. This represents the helical capsid that measles virus has. So again, helical slinky for helical capsid. Now, if the weasels were the only ones to be harmed from the fire, I wouldn't feel too bad. But the fire is causing lots of property damage. Look at this netted cage here with a bunch of white toy balls in it. They are getting destroyed, melting together and bursting out of the netted cage. The netted cage represents the lymphatic system, a connection of lymph channels with nodes scattered about. Next, these white balls represent white blood cells, or lymphocytes. The fact that they are melting and fusing together represents lymphocytes fusing together to form giant cells. These are often called warthin finkel cells. Now the name, warthin finkel is not very important to remember because examiners don't like to go after eponyms like that. However, knowing that they are fusing in lymph nodes is important. So lymphocytes fusing in the lymph nodes is very important. Lastly, the fact that the balls are bursting out of the lymphatic cage helps reinforce the idea that there is lymphocytic hyperplasia of the lymph nodes, which is also important. So again, white toy balls in a cage breaking out and melting together represents fused lymphocytes and hyperplasia in lymph nodes. Next, see the store owner getting carried out on a stretcher. The fact that he is on a stretcher reinforces the idea that he is immunocompromised. At Physio, we use the stretcher a lot to represent immunocompromised or immunodeficient patients. He is coughing uncontrollably and being taken toward the ambulance. This coughing represents pneumonia. However, the ambulance isn't such a safe place either. It just had a giant explosion within it. And that giant explosion represents giant cell in giant cell pneumonia. So bringing this all together, a giant explosion with a coughing man on a stretcher stands for giant cell pneumonia in immunocompromised patients. Now this image is a histopathologic slide of lung tissue in measles patients, specifically those who develop giant cell pneumonia. You can see the giant cells fused together in the middle there. Now I'd like to point out that this immunocompromised patient on the stretcher does not have a rash or coplic spots like the weasels do. This helps point out that immunodeficient patients often don't have the typical symptoms of measles that occur in patients with a normal immune system. So let's reinforce what patients experience when they have a normal immune system. Cough, conjunctivitis, coryza, coplic spots, and a rash. So we've got the weasel in the back coughing, the coplic spots on the left, in the front we've got coryza and conjunctivitis, and on the right we have the maculopapular rash starting on the head and going down. That's uncomplicated measles, and this is how it presents in patients who are normal, or rather, have a normal immune system. Taking it a step further, when you see a patient with these typical uncomplicated measles symptoms, your goal is to prevent things like giant cell pneumonia, or subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, or regular encephalitis. Now that we've covered all the material in the image, let's do a question to apply what you've learned. An unvaccinated two-year-old girl presents with a cough and watery eyes. A serum lab test confirms high levels of measles IgM. After further discussion with the girl's mother, the clinician suspects the child is malnourished and likely has a deficiency of retinol. Which of the following symptoms is most likely to present next? A. Encephalitis B. Giant cell pneumonia C. Maculopapular rash or D. Watery diarrhea Now hopefully you've noticed that measles was confirmed. There were high levels of measles IgM. Also, you may have noticed that this child is more likely to get complications from measles as indicated by the retinol deficiency. So which of the following symptoms is most likely to present next? The correct answer is C, maculopapular rash. Now A is wrong. If you thought encephalitis, you may have been thinking that the patient is at a higher risk of getting encephalitis as a result of her retinol or vitamin A deficiency, which is true. She is at a higher risk of getting this complication. However, the typical symptoms are still more likely especially the maculopapular rash. And B is wrong because giant cell pneumonia only occurs in immunocompromised patients. She has a retinol deficiency, but she's not considered immunocompromised. And we weren't given any reason to suspect she's immunocompromised. Finally, D is wrong because diarrhea is not associated with a measles infection. Going back to our image, recall that the typical symptoms are more likely to present than complications like encephalitis, subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, or giant cell pneumonia. And now you've covered everything you need to know about measles.